Okay, so I've got a really interesting puzzle for you today. It's called the Angel Problem. And I think this puzzle should be more well known because it's absolutely fascinating. And although it's a mathematical puzzle in nature, it's it's very different to most of the maths that you'll see around. Okay, so the idea is really simple. You have an angel um, that lives on a chessboard or some kind of checkerboard or something. And the angel can move around. So... Um, I don't actually have a chessboard and I don't actually have an angel. What I have is a pterodactyl and a checkered shirt, but they'll do. So the idea is that the, the uh, well, I'll call it an angel. The angel can move like a chess king. So they can go to any square horizontally, vertically or diagonally. Um, so to start with, let's just say that this angel can um, just do one move every turn. So maybe it can go there, and then it can go there, and then it can go there, etc. Now, the angel is one player in this game. The other player is the devil. And the devil can destroy squares of this board. So it can eat any square it likes on any turn. So for example, the devil might decide to destroy this square here. We can place a coin over it. And what that means is that the angel cannot land on that square. And um, so these two players take it in turns. The angel has a move. And then the devil can destroy one of the squares. And then the angel has another move. And the devil can destroy another one of the squares. Now, what the devil wants to do is he wants to enclose the angel. He wants to trap the angel. Essentially, he wants to eat the angel in the end. He wants to make sure that there's no way for the angel to move. And we're going to imagine that this chessboard goes on forever in every direction. So there's no boundaries. And the question is pretty simple. Can the angel escape or is he going to get eaten by the devil if the devil plays properly? But it's very, very interesting. I mean, um, what's the right kind of strategy for the angel? If the angel has some kind of strategy in mind, like, I'm going to go this way, well, maybe the devil can anticipate that. And um, he can go there, or something like that. So the question is, who wins, the angel or the devil? Uh, in this game. So this is the first problem for you. Um, and I know usually I give you problems which are fairly easy to solve to start with, but I don't think this one's very easy. Um, but there you go. So this is, um, this is the problem. Who wins, the angel or the devil? Can you think of a way, a strategy that, for this devil to be able to blockade in the angel or not? It, can the angel always get away? So this is the first problem. Um, now we can make things a bit more general. So this problem has been solved, but I don't think it's easy. Now a more general setting is, okay, well I guess I'm going to tell you the answer anyway because I can't really help it. So in fact in this case I'll tell you that the devil can actually win. So if both the angel and the devil play perfectly, the devil can win. So um, somehow the, uh, the devil can place, can destroy the right kind of squares in such a way that the angel just cannot get away. Okay, so there is a way for the devil to win in this case. However, what happens if we make the angel more powerful? You see the angel has wings, right? So instead of assuming that it moves like a chess king, like this, let's assume instead that the angel can move two chess king moves every turn. So for example, 
on the angel's turn, he could go like this, or he could go like this. He can move um, two squares in any direction. He can do two chess king moves. And the devil, the same as before, he gets to destroy any square on the board every turn. So in that case, who wins? Well, this has been a massive, massive unsolved problem. I, I say massive. I, I don't think this is something that a huge number of uh, mathematicians have concentrated on. But it's been a problem which a lot of people have worked on for a long time and um, they didn't come up with a solution for a long time. So when the angel can do two steps instead of one step, it's obviously harder to catch the angel. But the question is, can the angel actually get away? And then... Um, that's a very difficult problem, like I say. People worked on that a long time. So how about if we make the angel even more powerful? What about if the angel can move a thousand, a thousand steps every turn? Remember, this is an infinite chessboard. So in that case, can the angel escape? Or can the devil kind of block in the angel with some kind of, like a moat of um, squares which have been eaten out, which stops the angel escaping? Um, so these are some very, very interesting problems, and I think it's well worth having a think about it. Um, so I must say, when I last read about this problem, as far as I knew it was an open problem, but now it's actually been solved. So now people know um, who wins, but I, I, I'm not going to tell you. And um, don't worry, though, there's still lots and lots of uh, open problems left. For example... I mean, basically, we're playing on a grid here. So, um, you know, every sort of, if you like, every chess king move is just moving to an adjacent square. So you can think of this like a network, okay? So this this um, square, this node here is linked to this node here, and this node here, etc. So what about if we're playing on a more general network? say, a hexagonal network or, or some kind of crazy random network. What about in that case? Say the, uh, the devil is destroying the nodes and the angel is flying along a certain number of edges. Who wins then? Well, that's completely open territory. Nobody knows. So um, this seemingly kind of innocent problem, just involving movement and the destruction of squares, has a, a lot of theory behind it and there's a lot of things that can be explored here.